Good morning, YouTube. Welcome back to my channel. This is Lydia with Sweet King's Garden, and we're starting this video a little different than we normally do. And that is mainly because Alex and I have a huge announcement for you all, and that is that we are finally able to expand our family, and we are currently 14 weeks pregnant. So I recently announced on our Instagram um, the very exciting news. This has been a very heartfelt and hard journey for both of us, which I will share in a different video because of course this video is all about the garden. But I wanted to really just start this garden tour off with the theme of my entire channel and that has been to grow something new. So as you all know, um, if you followed me this since January when I started my channel, most of what we're growing and embarking on is all very much new to me. I've been gardening for several years, but a lot of what I'm gardening this year is brand new. We're in a brand new space uh, with this extended garden, and I'm just really figuring things out along the way. So I'm going to pop in a couple of our pregnancy announcement pictures here for you all to see. Um, but I just want to thank you all for your support so far and to our friends and family. I know that Alex and I are absolutely overjoyed to be pregnant finally and um, I think a lot of our family and friends are also just so supportive and excited for us too. So anyway, we are going to start this garden tour. I can't wait to show you how things are doing and you will probably notice that this little blue chair has been very symbolic over the past couple garden tours and that's because Alex and I knew we were pregnant and um, every time I come out to the garden now I'm just thinking this time next year I'll have hopefully a little one to be joining me on my garden tours as well so with that let's get started. Okay we're gonna start with the back garden today so here you have our lovely bull hide beans. So these have really taken off. These were just itty bitty the last time I shot a garden tour, which was about, I wanna say two weeks ago. I think these are pretty close to being mature. I'm gonna try it. Mmm. Tastes like a really nice green bean. And it's just gorgeous. Mmm. I'm going to harvest these because these are all over the place. The rest of this plant, it's slowly working its way over. It's still about halfway through. I don't know if it's really gonna make its way over to the other side or not, but it's still setting these gorgeous flowers. I hope you can see this because it's a bit overcast, but I'm so excited. So typically I prefer raw veggies over cooked veggies. One, because of the nutritional factor. It's just better for you anyway. Um, but I just love the crunch and fresh the crunchiness and freshness that you get with fresh uh, veggies. So I am so excited to try these. I can't wait for Alex to try these also, cause he does like green beans. He wasn't a big sugar snap pea fan, but. So on the other side of the trellis here, we do have my sugar snap peas. So yes, this side is definitely petering out. I've let a lot of these pods dry. So I think I'll probably take these off I've been kind of hesitant to just pull this all out just because this one side is still producing some sugar snap peas, which I mean, I still love snacking. I'm actually gonna grab another one. So I'll give the sugar snap peas at least another week just until this left side dies down. I just can't bring myself to actually pull the plants up if I'm still getting a few sweet treats here and there. So we'll see how that goes. Maybe this will still be here during the next garden tour. And moving on, we have air borage that kind of looks, it's just beaten down a bit from all the rain we've gotten. Um, and the plant seems to have been really heavy, but a lot of the flowers, let me show on this side. The flowers are done. It looks like, I don't know if these are pods going to seed. No, it doesn't seem like they're pods, but um, 
it's been a gorgeous plant and man they were not kidding when they said that pollinators love this and then up here we have my friend's sunflowers which are looking so gorgeous the pollinators love them too we have a whole bunch of chamomile, which my intent was to harvest a bunch and dehydrate or preserve it. So I have to look into how I can do that if it's not too late. I mean, granted, I've missed the boat with harvesting while these had the leaves on it, but I think I can harvest the actual plant. I don't know. So for anyone who harvests chamomile, let me know if I'm too late or if I still have an opportunity, but I'll also do some research on my end. But nonetheless, it's been really nice to just see a pop of yellow over here. What I can probably harvest also is some edamame. So they are doing so good and the pods are really filling out. I have two plants of these. The second bush over there is doing well. And then my cucumber plants on both sides of the trellis. So these are definitely dying back. Not surprising, it's the end of the season for them. Alex started to harvest some cucumbers and I was like, leave them right there. I'm gonna shoot a garden tour soon where I'm gonna actually harvest things too. <laughs> so he just dropped the cucumbers and I'm gonna um, shoot a clip within this video of me getting the rest of these cucumbers out. But this is the second wave. Am I oh my with cucumbers? I planted these because I knew I wanted to make a ton of pickles this year. I made pickles two separate times already this year from cucumbers from this trellis on both sides. So far, I've pickled 30 pounds of cucumbers. <laughs> and um, I also pickled a whole bunch of cucumelons, but they're so small they don't really weigh too much. But I've definitely gotten a lot of pickles out of them so far and you'll see I planted even more cucumber plants and after this last round where I pickled like I spent a Saturday pickling like 23 pounds I told Alex I was like I can't believe I just planted more cucumbers because I'm so over it but it will be nice and I still have a pickle party to host so that pickle party will definitely occur at the end of the season and that will be a lot of fun did just purchase a bunch of seeds from Baker Creek, so the rareseeds.com website. I'll link that down below. Although I don't think I have anything that's trellising for the fall, so I might have to order more things. So if you think of anything that you feel would be really nice for me to put on a trellis for the fall season, let me know. I know I have sugar snap peas planned maybe i'll just have this as sugar snap peas i don't know yet help me out with planning i'm still undecided i just have a soft plan <laughs> so these are the rest of the sunflowers on the other side of the trellis and i have such a nice variety of colors and then more borage and then we have air sugar baby watermelons so alex and i are patient patiently waiting for this to ripe. This plant doesn't look like it's doing too good. It's definitely getting spotty and I'm afraid to touch it because I'll be touching other plants and I don't want to spread any diseases. So I have to um, look that up. I don't know it, it has been extremely hot lately, like in the 80s and 90s, very humid. So I don't know if that has something to do with this, but it's not looking nearly as good as it used to, but I have four watermelons growing. So if I just get one, I'll be happy, but I'm ha happy to see at least that we have four, but I'm not seeing any new fruit that's setting. But this is the other side of the watermelon trellis and our fourth watermelon is down here all cozy. So this part is new. I'll have to guide that to the trellis. So in this first four by 12 bed, we have our easy sauce tomatoes. These are aroma like tomato that I like to use for pasta sauces. And then we have Paul Robeson tomatoes. These are looking fantastic so far. Nice large fruits. The plants doing really well so far. This is supposed to be a dark star hybrid. And 
and <laughs> the mislabel saga continues. So this was labeled Ruby Monster Hybrid. These are clearly black strawberry tomatoes, which as I remind, woo, <laughs> the string to my GoPro scared me. I thought it was a snake coming my way. <laughs> I'm not afraid of snakes, but it was like I was squatting down and it took me by surprise. <laughs> um, anyway, so I originally thought I was just going to have two black strawberry tomatoes in this middle 4x12 bed. And then as you've seen from the last garden tour video, it was confirmed that I had a third black strawberry plant, tomato plant at the front of our house. This makes the fourth one, which again, I'm not complaining because these are just gorgeous. I've been coming out here every morning, of course, to check out the garden and every single day there's just more and more color that's showing on these plants and you'll see what the other black strawberry plants look like also. And then this last one over here is a lemon boy hybrid. So this is supposed to be a large yellow tomato that Alex and I are really looking forward to. I thought I had planted more lemon boys, but I don't think I did by mistake. And then of course our nasturtium is just billowing out on both sides. This plant does not look nearly as healthy as the other plant. This was the first one that I started indoors and transplanted and I was just so tickled when I actually seen that it came up. So let me take you to the other side here. I have to do something about this grass in the walkway. So these were pepper plants. I don't know what variety I planted here. And then let's see what variety this is. I don't even know. Sweet Bell? I don't know. We'll have to see once that produces something. And then of course dill, which I have to pull this out because it's all gnarly looking. I forgot we have one more pepper plant over here, which I was distracted by the sunflowers, but these are my candy cane peppers. Let me try and, oh my goodness. This nasturtium is, I didn't know nasturtium grew like that. But these are the candy cane, black candy cane, no, just candy cane. Oh my goodness. Chocolate candy cane peppers. And they're looking nice and streaky. The plant itself isn't getting very high and it's not setting a whole bunch of fruit, but it is nice to see a different type of pepper in the garden. From my most recent Baker Creek uh, seed order, I ordered a few other pepper varieties that I'm excited to try next year. And I figured, I know I was pretty early with ordering those seeds, but I'm like paranoid that things are gonna be sold out. So moving into the middle four by 12, we have the lettuce. I am actually gonna take this up. I had some salad yesterday and I think this has bolted and it made the lettuce super bitter. That or the new dressing that I bought was super bitter, bitter but I think seeing these heads here, I think is a sign that this plant is at the end of its life in terms of being able to harvest stuff. So I'm actually gonna take this stuff while the flowering part off now. This was butter crunch lettuce. This is my favorite lettuce just because it's just nice and crunchy. I like crunchy lettuces, not necessarily soft lettuces. I'll just throw this over there. So I will probably sow some more lettuce here. Swiss chard, so good, so nutritious, but I haven't really had an appetite for it, sadly. So it's so pretty though. I have to really try and get myself to eat it. And then over here, cucamelons. So these are so cute as always. I harvested a ton and already there are a ton more 
fruits on here. Oh my gosh. I'm just looking at this and thinking I need to pickle more. <laughs> and I'm so over pickling. <laughs> no, it'd be fun, but I have to definitely get more cans and lids because man, I burned through my supply, but these have been just a joy. If I don't harvest everything, it at least fills the trellis so beautifully. And it's just so go gorgeous to see. I will say we had friends of ours come over. They have an almost two year old who's obsessed with picking. They've been taking her to a local blueberry patch to pick blueberries. And um, I knew I had to pick a bunch of cucumelons. So I saved them for her. She came over, she helped us pick a lot and she was munching one of these too. And she, I, we were so impressed by how many cucumelons she had. Um, and we think it's just because she really enjoyed like the crunchiness and they're just so cute. So if you have little ones, of course, I'm, mind you the size, choking hazards and stuff like that, but um, she seemed to really enjoy them. And of course that just made my heart swell a bit. <gasps> oh, I'm noticing a caterpillar on one of these leaves. We're gonna get that guy. This is why you have to come out to the garden frequently um yeah so with that let me tell you about this other side of this 4 by 12. so these are heirloom rainbow tomatoes every single one of them looks funky i don't know what's wrong and i didn't want to bring myself to actually pull the fruits off but um we're gonna let them go but i don't know why this plant is setting fruit like that and Next to it, we have black strawberry tomatoes. So this is probably gonna be the first black strawberry tomato that ripens. And Alex and I were standing out here the other day, like, should we pick it? Should we try it? And we're like, we know it's not ripe. Why are we considering picking this? But we're just so intrigued and so excited. So um, we have one black strawberry tomato plant there. This borage that you all seen was whittled away. This is now in its glory. And then we have the second black strawberry plant here. Now you will see there's a lot of missing fo foliage. That is because I started to notice this spotting. Oh, and it looks like, so that's spotting right here on the corner. We had a couple of branches that had that. And last night I cut those branches off and I'm going to sanitize my um, garden shears, but I, th I can't remember what that's a sign of. I don't know if it's blight or something else, but I think I read like the first defense uh, for natural gardening is to try and cut those branches off so that it doesn't spread. But I have to look into that, which makes me nervous because I mean, you wait all season long for these tomatoes to ripen and like the plants to just be successful and then for them to be taken out by something. It can be heartbreaking and I've encountered that before. So I hope we can get ahead of any type of disease that spreads. But that's why I'm also conscious not to really touch a lot of my plants right now, except for when I go back to like truly harvest and prune. I haven't been pruning really a lot just because again, I pruned pretty heavily at the very beginning. Um, so these, once I, you'll see that once the tomatoes like found the trellis and everything, they're pretty stable and self-sufficient, which I'm happy to see. So, but nonetheless, I definitely wanted to shoot this garden tour now because just keep in mind, this is what the plant looks like now. I hope I don't have any, I hope it doesn't look worse in like a week or so. The last tomato plant we have over here is our prairie fire tomatoes. And these we are saving for sun-dried tomatoes. And we have one tomato back there that is starting to blush. These are supposed to get like a nice orange, not a heavy red. So that will probably be ripe soon. So Alex and I look forward to trying that. And I hope to get a lot more tomatoes from here so that we can really have like a nice batch of sun-dried tomatoes. So moving on to our last tomato bed in this garden, we have 
more easy sauce hybrid. These are those Roma tomatoes. We have plenty of fruits on this plant, nothing blushing yet. And then I think this is Paul Robeson. Yep, we have Paul Robeson tomatoes here. I'm a little apprehensive that I've labeled these correctly. So I'm saying these are Paul Robeson, but we'll see when they actually ripen. And then this is Dark Star Hybrid. Look how gigantic the one tomato is back here. I am so excited. And then we have Ruby Monster Hybrids. We grew them last year and like them. And then I can't remember what variety this is. It may be Easy Sauce or I don't know what, it, oh, let's see here. Lemon Boy, oh, okay, we do have two Lemon Boy, excellent. So these are yellow tomatoes. And then on the other side, we have kale, which is getting torn up. I will probably pull this out and sew new stuff in today or this weekend. Here's another Oh, we have another Lemon Boy hybrid. Okay. See, my memory's horrible. Apparently we have three Lemon Boys, which is good. This I think is wild mint or something. I thought I purposely planted this. I don't think I did. I'll probably pull that out as well. And which, oh my gosh, this is Lemon Boy hybrid. Oh my gosh, I'm just cracking myself up. So apparently we have four lemon boy hybrids. That's quite all right. I'm not gonna complain, but it's just funny how you can hear my reaction change in this video. Like, oh, we only have one. We wish we had more. Come to find out we have at least four. So speaking of tomato plants, I have to show you this. So yesterday morning I was looking at my tomatillo plants because they're starting to drop fruit. And this is a volunteer tomato plant. I have no idea what variety. I can tell you one thing, we're set on black strawberry and lemon boy. <laughs> so in a way I'm hoping it's neither of the two. And of course it may be something completely different, but that's looking very strong. And Alex and I are excited to see what that uh, sets. So. Moving into, we're now at our fifth arch trellis. Take a look at these. So these are the Chinese red noodle beans, the slow starters that I was talking about being kind of disappointed because it took them forever to really start trellising and whatnot, but man, I'm seeing beans all over the place which is really cool. And the blossoms are absolutely gorgeous. And it looks like the ants are liking this too. I will say I tried a red noodle bean, I think it was last weekend, and it was still kind of like soft inside, which was really gross to me. So I'm hoping that I just ate an immature bean and that's not really the true consistency or the consistency of the bean will change once I do actually stir fry it because that's what we will be using that for. Moving on to our last two beds back here, we have our tomatillos. So I've been super excited about these. I've already made one batch of salsa verde, which I will share that recipe in the in the description below, but you can see once they're ripe, they fall off the, the plant super easy. This is that light husk that I was talking about. If you look compared to the greener husk, and this is like completely hard because the fruit is mature and you can see part of the fruit. I did not realize tomatillos inside are kind of sticky. Um, which again, I've never tried tomatillos before. I've never like had one raw. I still haven't tried one raw, but I've only had it after it's been prepared via salsa verde before. So this was really nice or interesting, I should say, um, 
and I'm just really excited about it. So this plant is still setting a lot of fruits and every single day I am coming out here because I'll find tomatillos that are on the ground. Thankfully, I'm thankful that we have the straw mulching because when it's a soft surface and um, it makes it easy for me to find these. And because of them being kind of sticky, I could imagine if they sit for a long period of time, you're gonna see all kinds of pests inside the fruit, uh, which may not make it very pleasant when you're trying to actually utilize it for yourself. So I'm coming out here every single today. Today I'll do another big harvest so that I can do like a big uh, preservation of salsa verde. So at the end of this tomatillo bed, we have more poppies. I have a whole bunch of carrots that are good for me to harvest. So the next time I need carrots for something, maybe I'll make roasted carrots. Ooh, another recipe that I'll link for you all down in the description. There's um, one of my favorite food uh, websites to follow is the Real Food Dietitians website. They have a lot of clean eating recipes and they have this Dijon thyme aioli. I think that uh, aioli dip is with a roasted carrot stick recipe or roasted sweet potatoes but anything that could use like a nice dipping sauce that Dijon thyme aioli is phenomenal. So plenty of carrots over here and then some more sunflowers which look at the pollinators go. They absolutely love it. So happy to see. Now we have the zucchini bed. That does not, the zucchini plants aren't looking too great. They're still setting some fruit, but I am waiting for my Baker Creek order to come in because I am going to rip all of these zucchini plants out and we are going to try to grow pumpkins for the first time this year. So Another thing that you'll see as it relates to my pregnancy is each week I am posting like the baby's growth and I'm finding something in my garden that matches the size of the baby. So today at 14 weeks, the baby was the size of one of the larger black strawberry tomatoes. And if you were to go through my Instagram, you'll see uh, what I've marked from previous weeks. But my intent, <laughs> because I will be due anticipated due date is January 27th, 2023. I'm looking for something that will be around six to 10 pounds and a pumpkin sounds just about right. So I need to get started growing pumpkins. <laughs> so that's what's going to go into that garden bed. And then lastly, back here, we have our three green stalks. I did fertilize each of these uh, last week and they seem to be doing much better. Strawberries are kind of not so great looking. They're awfully dry and dead in some areas. So I don't know if it's because of the climate or if it's me, but I, will, I still continue to water it every day. This green stalk you'll see is actually green in it and that's because I bought some plants I have mints, two types of mint, um, and this basil I actually grew from seed, but so I pretty much just put mint in here just as a pop of color. And then over here you can see this lettuce and all. I feel like it looks a lot better. I mean, it doesn't look great, but considering what it looked like a couple of weeks ago, I think it looks better. <laughs> I mean, the Swiss chard's looking pretty good, too, over here. It's a shame I don't like this stuff. So, yep, but I, I have been harvesting this lettuce for my salads. This stuff does taste good compared to the butter crunch on the other side. So now, let's explore what we have in the front gardens. All right, walking up towards the house to the front gardens, starting with our butterfly garden. We, of course, have the butterfly bush setting those beautiful dark purple flowers. I ended up buying some established herbs. I have a small basil plant here which I just put in the garden. This is some sage. And what is that? Oh my gosh. 
I don't know what pest is on that. I'm thinking it's some kind of caterpillar. And then this is actually sage that I started from seed, so definitely happy that that came up. Of course, my lamb's ear, I should clean up all this dead stuff, but I only have so much time. <laughs> I have some parsley that I bought from the store. I have cat mint. My thyme, which hopefully we'll have with carrots this afternoon. Some chives. This is another basil plant that I bought and it's starting to do really well. Maybe I'll make some pesto this weekend. Not quite sure. We'll see what I have time for. A whole lot of rosemary. Oregano, cat mints, and then that over there is citronella. These are the purple majesty potatoes. I have to add more soil to this. It's not doing too good. I don't know if that's from heat or not. Then in this narrow garden bed, I am going to clean this up once my seeds come in. I'm going to sow a lot of lettuce here, maybe some other crops, but this will transition to the fall garden. Of course, we have a lot of Swiss chard, but these right here are cucumber plants. I think I have three, six, eight plants total. So I have two over there, three here, and three here. Again, this is part of my like mini freak out to Alex. Like, I can't believe I just sewed more, but that'll be fun. It always looks wonderful over there when that area is covered with cucumbers. Still have a lot of dill over in this other garden. These pepper plants are doing really well. These are poblano, our absolute favorite type of pepper, and they are just looking great. So I have two poblanos, then I have one jalapeno, and then back there, that should be a poblano as well, but oh, finally, I'm seeing one flower. I hope that that sets some fruit back there. These are cayenne peppers that I saved from my dad's plant last year. Behind it was supposed to be the habanero that did not take off. And we have a rogue dill that decided to pop up over here, overshadowing the poppies. I'm not surprised when I see dill pop up anywhere. <laughs> then here we have more poppies. We have, I think these are banana peppers. And then back there, that's a basil plant that I purchased. And then back there are shishito peppers. We're looking forward to that. And then this is that surprise black strawberry tomato plant, which how gorgeous are these? And then some parsley, it's kind of dead more basil, chamomile, dill, Swiss chard, kale, Swiss chard. And then these are four tomato plants in total that I need to tie up and trellis because they're kind of just going all over the place. So Alex said this might be my wild garden. <laughs> so we have a couple of things to harvest. I know I want to harvest we're going to start with the tomatillos first, just because they, they are, oh, we're going to start with the cucumbers first and then go to tomatillos and then make our way over to those bull high beans. And that will conclude this garden tour. So I'm actually going to end this part because this is at the end of the garden tour. And I just want to thank you for hanging out with me today. I can't wait to see you soon. And I hope you take care. I'm gonna go ahead and pop some harvesting. All right, we're back. I have my rue apron again, and we're gonna harvest some cucumbers. another really fun recipe that I love if you have an excess of cucumbers is a cucumber salsa. I will link that recipe down below as well. 
I've made it once already this year. However, it was when I was about eight weeks pregnant. I have very strong food aversions, especially to garlic. It was too strong of a flavor. And the salsa does have um, garlic in it. Even with me scaling back, I still couldn't stomach it, which was absolutely heartbreaking because it is so crunchy and refreshing. And it's not a typical salsa that you're used to seeing, but it's a wonderful garden salsa. And I know tzatziki sauce is a really nice way to maximize cucumber harvest as well. Oh my gosh. These are a lot. I really think I am harvesting more than what I harvested last time with you all. And I think that was about 10 to 12 pounds of cucumbers. This is feeling about the same right now. There's still quite a bit on the vines here. <laughs> I don't even have to open my bag because it's pretty open, but that's all cucumbers. I'm thinking it's about 15 pounds maybe. So I am going to take my apron off and we're going to use my garden basket to harvest some um, uh, tomatillos. This is a bit of a jungly mess. <laughs> I do need to tie up these tomatillo plants like further up the trellis, but for right now, I am just going through and I'm grabbing the fruit that looks like a pale yellow husk and that feels full. I may not be able to get a lot, but I'm also going to grab any fruit that is has already dropped from the plant. So this is a perfect example. You can see the fruit has popped out of the husk. That is perfect. to be gentle with lifting these up. This is our tomatillo haul. Not too big, but I also have a jar in my kitchen of things that I've gathered um, from the past couple of days. So this will definitely be enough for several batches of uh, salsa verde. So I can't wait to try that. Now I am going to harvest some of these bull high beans. This is the size of beans that we get from this plant. And they just look gorgeous. I'd imagine I could probably make some kind of crema sauce, like a light sour cream, cilantro, a little bit of garlic, salt and pepper, something to dip these in. If you like to eat them fresh like I do. Granted, I've never had these prior to this video. Um, and I could just see this being like a really nice dipping snack. Oh, I can't get over. Look at the contrast so far. So the last item we're going to harvest today is edamame soybeans. So I just read that there's a very narrow window for harvesting edamame. You want to pick the pods when they're still bright green and they've just plumped with the seeds inside. Anything past that, they've passed their peak. So I've just taken a look and I gave my the edamame, um, edamame pods a, a feel and they're nice and plump and still bright green. So they're behind my trellises, so I'm going to squeeze back there and add them to our basket here. Okay, so I'll show you what I have. Pretty small har harvest of edamame here, but these appear to be plump pods to me. So I went ahead and picked them. There's still some 
that aren't as full so I'm gonna give them a couple of days but I'm just kind of freaking out that there's such a small window I am sweating so bad um, but yeah not bad for today in addition to all of our cucumbers <laughs> 